Hey everyone, this is Logan with Blockchain Grind, and today I want to talk to you about Findora. It's a network that probably a lot of you haven't heard of before, but it's really up and coming. You know, it's been around for quite a while. It's derived from a project uh, of Stanford, and it has been laying low for many years now, and they're finally ready to kind of go public and take this blockchain to the next level. And uh, they had some really, really, really interesting news come out uh, yesterday and today, actually. Yesterday, they announced a new CEO, Sam Harrison, who was previously of the Harmony blockchain. Um, many of their team is previously of the Harmony blockchain. They've got Daniel Pagan. They've got Give, I believe. Um, there's, there's several people that transitioned uh, to their team. Um, but more importantly, I want to talk about the Findora 2023 roadmap. This is huge news. Um, I, I should disclaim, I am a validator for, the, for Fendora. I started validating, I believe, in May of 2022. And uh, actually, the token price right now is basically the same as it was when I started validating. It's 0 0.0015 and some change. Um, so you can kind of look at that. I'm not here to talk so much about the tokenomics. Uh, but I want to talk about what that roadmap, which I'll link in the description below, what that roadmap means for Fendora and uh, whether or not it's something that should be on your radar. So I'm gonna just kind of go through this uh, one by one and just describe some of the things that they cover. Um, starting with EVM staking, it's uh, pretty standard. It's a staking dashboard like you find on many other EVM uh, compatible blockchains and it connects with your MetaMask. Uh, as of right now, they've got the Fendora wallet, uh, which uses a separate layer for you to be able to stake on and it's, it's kind of clunky, but it works. That's what everyone's been doing for the last year or so, maybe even longer. Um, but more importantly, that's gonna make it more user-friendly for, for adoption, that's hugely important. If nobody can get to your network and stake on your network and deal with dApps on your network, nobody's gonna come. So they're working towards adoption. That's gonna be a huge theme in the roadmap. Um, but first, that's EVM staking. Uh, second is a, a thing very unique to Fendora. They're a privacy uh, protocol. They use ZK, zero knowledge proofs, uh, in a lot of what they do is uh, triple masked transactions. And that's gonna allow for not only privacy with uh, the amount of tokens that you're sending or receiving, uh, the type of token that you're sending or receiving, but also like who is send sending and receiving it. So that's gonna also be able to mask the uh, recipient and sending addresses. Uh, and why is this important? It's important just because privacy is important. You know, it's not like we have secrets to keep from one another, but uh, if I were to go outside and, and just bear the bank accounts, you know, to the world, I might get targeted. Um, not just, you know, in terms of privacy and security, but it's, it's up to you. It's not enough to just own the information and own the asset. It's also up to you to be able to own how much information about what you own is disclosed. And in a lot of EVM, uh, chains, that's that's not the case. If I have an NFT and you know my wallet address or you know a wallet address or a NFT, you can look at everything. You can look at the traits of my NFT. You can see how much money I have in the in the bank in my wallet, uh, and that's not something that everybody wants. You know, I know nowadays everybody has a Venmo account and you can comment on your friends' uh, Venmo transactions and whatnot. But realistically, not everybody wants everybody else to know what they have, and that's fair. You know, that's the user's right uh, to to do what they want with what they have and the information. Uh, so that's that's actually huge. That's a that's a fundamental part of the relevancy of Fendora. Uh, multi-sig wallet. I imagine it's gonna be like something like Gnosis multi-sig, probably a fork of that. I'm really hoping it's something familiar. It's user-friendly. I'm hoping that we get a, an updated version that allows for multiple transactions to be pushed through. Um, and that's, that's really important for managing project funds. Uh, for DAOs, for the chain itself. Uh, that's that's important for any sort of communal fund where you've got uh, a variety of signers that are gonna be required to approve a transaction. Let's say you've got like a four of five or a four of seven or you know whatever your, your multi-sig is set up, that's, that's gonna be something that every chain needs in order for projects to manage their finances on that chain in a secure manner. Uh, next is on-chain number randomizer. Seems kind of simple, but it's it's a decentralized way for numbers to be randomized on-chain, verifiably, I'm assuming. Uh, and that's for GameFi. Let's say you're making a Dungeons & Dragons style game or something and your user rolls a dice, 
you need to make sure that the number's random and not something that someone can exploit. Um, so it sounds small, but it's actually a pretty big deal to have that, you know, paved the way for GameFi coming to Fendora. Next is gonna be the Rosetta API. And this is again for adoption. It's not the most you know, impressive thing in the world in terms of ooh and ah, but it's something that you need in order for developers and blockchains and you know, DEXs or, or any exchange to be able to connect with, with you. You need to make you know, that API available for them, right? So that's really great to see. It's not gonna be some isolated space that can't actually be communicated with. They really seem to be focusing on adoption, user friendliness and developer friendliness, right? Which is gonna be huge. Um, and I would say the next one is the biggest part of this entire announcement. It's a hundred million dollar grant program and they haven't released much of the details, but it's a hundred million dollars over the course of several years that's gonna be available to, to applicants. Um, and that's gonna be uh, something they're gonna outline further in February, we're being told. Um, so that's something to look out for. I wish I had a lot more to say about that. I imagine it's gonna be something like other chains have where uh, projects are prompted to kind of write a description about themselves, maybe to be interviewed, um, to introduce their product and to meet certain criteria like milestones, daily active users, uh, unique users, etc., cetera, um, and to qualify for a grant. You know, on Harmony, it was a $50,000 grant if you met XYZ. So that's, that's kind of what I would consider, but that's gonna be something we learn more about in the coming month. And it's gonna be very, in my opinion, bullish for the chain. That's something that a lot of, uh, a lot of project leaders are looking for is a way to fund their project and introduce it to new communities. So that's, that's huge and I'm really excited to learn more about that uh, in the coming weeks. Next is ZK NFTs. ZK NFTs are gonna follow uh, more about what I was saying about triple masking earlier. It's gonna allow EVM compatible NFTs to be transferred to Fendora, thereby allowing them to take use of the privacy that's enabled on Fendora, where you can decide how much information gets put on the chain publicly or privately. Uh, in regards to what you sent, how many of them you sent, and who received it and who sent it, right? Uh, so that, that can be really big because I don't really know of anything like that that allows you to have that privacy-enabled um, manner of interacting with NFTs, especially if it's gonna accept NFTs for most chains. That seems pretty big for the NFT community, in my opinion. Uh, next would be the Polygon Bridge. And this, this one's actually pretty huge too. There's a lot of real bangers on here. Uh, it's the Poly Polygon Bridge, Rialto is what they're working on right now to Fendora. As most of you probably know, Polygon has been king of making partnerships lately. I know AVAX just partnered with AWS in a sense, but uh, Polygon has some really big partnerships. They've got great user adoption. They're really paving the way for implementing standards in Web3 that allow you know, user adoption at a mass level. And I think we're gonna see more of that. I believe they were partnered with Disney um, recently. They've, they've got some really astounding partnerships at Polygon. They've got great branding. Their grant program seems pretty decent and they're really stellar at marketing. So to see a bridge going from Polygon to Fendora as like the first one, that's that's really great um, to see. That's, that's gonna give Fendora a very clear ability to have user adoption from a very popular chain right now. Um, next on the list is app chains. I'm imagining that this is gonna be something like AVAX subnets. That's, it could be more like a side chain, but I think it's gonna be like AVAX subnets. And if that's the case, it would be something that ideally would be revenue generating for Fendora um, in the sense that they can allow a project to run a separate blockchain within Fendora's you know, standards of privacy and, and everything like that. Um, and, and possibly even the gas fees are paid with the project token, much like uh, DeFi Kingdoms has uh, Crystal uh, on AVAX, for instance. I, I could be wrong on that. I've asked the team as soon as I know, I'll update this if I need to, but that's what I imagine. And that's pretty big because that for AVAX to come out or for Avalanche to come out with that, it was, it was pretty huge news. And it's something that not every chain offers. Next is auditability and compliance. So this is uh, actually proposed in FIP2, which is a Fendora improvement uh, proposal, and it allows viewing keys. And this is really interesting. I think that it's it's very future-sighted. 
Um, and it's, it's going to help with adoption in the sense that these viewing keys allow uh, institutions to basically create tokens that have this viewing key that only they can access. So you can still do private transactions within the public space of the uh, like blockchain explorer. But let's say they use the example Circle. Let's say Circle issues a, a USDC coin for Fendora that has a viewing key that only they can access. But on chain, it has all the privacy standards that Fendora offers its users. Uh, and that's for auditability and compliance. That's gonna be huge, I think, moving forward. There's news almost every day about the government uh, and their their standards that are, that are kind of looming on the horizon. And I think that auditability is gonna be huge uh, for that. Uh, and then the last two, on-chain governance and community grant approvals. They didn't offer a ton of information about what that means, but on-chain governance, maybe snapshot votes for these uh, Fendora improvement proposals and community grant approvals. I'm wondering if that's gonna be some, some sort of DAO implementation or a way for the community to also participate in the general uh, grant procedure. Uh, not really sure on that. Um, again, once I have more information, I might do a follow-up. But all in all, very bullish news. You've got ton of, a ton of resources here that are gonna lead to a greater level of user adoption, like the EBM staking and the multi-sig wallet alone. Those are two huge things for creating dApps on a protocol. Um, the $100 million grants, I, I, I'm sure that's gonna create ripples. Uh, within the space immediately. That's that's huge and there's not a lot of grant programs being offered very actively right now given the market. Um, just take everything I say with a grain of salt. It's not financial advice, but I'm really excited to talk about Fendora because I don't feel like enough people are talking about it. There hasn't been a lot to talk about, but there have been a ton of changes to the management infrastructure and community uh, in the last, I don't know, six to nine months or so. Uh, so I would definitely give it some time, check it out. If it's not for you, great. There's tons of opportunities occurring right now. Um, but it's, it's something I think worth everyone's time to check out. If you missed the last one, you could be early now. Um, like I said, I'm a validator for, for Fendora and Harmony. Uh, I'll leave my validator links in the description below if you want, would like to support my validator. Um, again, this is Logan with Blockchain Grind, and as soon as I get any update, especially with this uh, grant uh, grant document, I'll go ahead and, and provide one to you guys as well. Thanks for your time, and I'll see you on the next one.